Hi guys! It's a beautiful day once again and welcome back to Dexter's World Channel! I've been reading books about how to breed this ornamental fish. How to breed these birds. How to breed these uh, chickens. These ducks. I'm also looking at other videos on YouTube on how to propagate and I also learn from the other channels about their techniques on how to do about all these things. And these learnings are really very lacking if we don't gonna try to do this one. That's why when I started, you know, discovering, applying all the techniques and methods that I have learned from books, I just realized that I can develop my own my own methods my own techniques procedure out of my personal experience i am saying this because i believe that i already have honed some of my skills in breeding in propagating and even caring several types of animals and this i learned from my experience You guys can see that our birds are already enjoying in this new setup that we have provided for them. In the past uh, several days, I look at them to be very anxious because some of them are really about to lay their eggs and they don't have these nesting boxes. And as you can see, we have hung these clay pots and the purpose of this is to provide them with privacy. Well, I observed that these birds really need privacy so that they cannot be disturbed by other pairs. They need to have an exclusive place where they can lay their eggs. And if we are going to put the nesting boxes near to each other or just making it adjacent to each other, the tendency is they will fight over territory. So I have tried, uh, you know, this technique, hanging this uh, clay pots and you can see that it's swinging. I really have doubts if this can affect the egg uh, hatchability because it's moving. And if you have some experience about this, you can educate me. That's why I said that I would like to try this one and I can give you some conclusions whether the hanging clay pots serving as their nest boxes and swinging could still effectively be a best method in order to hatch the eggs. So I will try this one. I already have mentioned about the coconut husk. It's good. I already have mentioned about bamboo as their nest boxes and also have tried these clay pots. It's also very good. So my conclusion is that these birds, whatever kind of material that you are going to use for them, as long as they're healthy, they will really lay their eggs. And I am trying this one in order to get some experience and I would like to make an update whether this is good or this is not good. So some of them are already making some inspections actually inside. Some of them are really about to lay their eggs because this season is actually the laying of the egg season and I'm so positive about this that since I'm already personally taking care of them. I'm giving them vitamins. I regularly checking their water. The cleanliness of the water should always be maintained. And giving them some supplements are the things that I newly adopted in order to ensure maximum production of these birds. So they're quite well. They're quite well and I'm so satisfied with their behaviors right now. And uh, you can see that they're happy 
seeing this uh, clay pots. Maybe in the minds of these birds, they will say that, well, that there's no problem because we have a big home. We also have this uh, nest boxes where we can lay their eggs. So this is my interpretation of their behavior. So now we will make some updates about our uh, fish tanks that I have featured you in the previous videos. So guys, I can let you see now the actual updates of these boxes. And right here, we have five outlets. Each of these boxes have this faucet. So the system, guys, is working now. This uh, faucet or this outlet is already dripping and the water is continuously flowing over. And the extra water will go to that uh, tube right there and then it will flow back to the filter bucket and then of course we have a submersible pump right there it lifts the water back here and the cycle is really doing well per my experience what is important in the fish tank is a good filtration system because in the good filtration system we can ensure the optimum health of our fish aside from giving them this uh, food it's very essential that we put so much concern as well about the kind of water that they have so guys, with good filtration system, I think you can be successful in your efforts to have a big fish farm. So actually, we are set to do another box right here. So this portion here will be converted to a big fish tank. This is a grow out tank for the fry. And I can see that this is a very suitable place for our goldfish in a sense that these are exposed to sunlight. Actually, what I have in mind right now is to transfer our greenhouse, a big greenhouse. And it's going to be relocated over there. Very suitable place also because it directly hit by the, the sunlight during all throughout the day. And that's a good uh, place for the, the greenhouse. But this one now will be converted to a grow out tank and you can see in the future that we can be able to make a good harvest out of this so allow me to share also with you something about the food that we are giving to our fish let's go to the kitchen and allow me to just uh, tell you something about what kind of food that we're giving to our uh, baby japanese koi that they grow so fast come on let's go inside We are here inside in the kitchen and right here beside me is a blender and I have here some pellet intended for the fish. This alone could not ensure the optimum growth because this is lacking actually for the fry. The nutrients of this pellet I think needs some fiber so that we can ensure the fast growth of our fish, especially the fry and they need this wheat germ this wheat germ is actually uh, for human consumption but i discovered that this is 100 percent best for our fish so what we do here is we will just mix this one just the the mixture of this is 50 50 50 percent wheat germ and 50 percent this commercial pellet If you have 100 grams of this commercial pellet, you will add some 100 grams also of this wheat germ. So the ratio is 50-50, 50% wheat germ, 50% this commercial pellet. And I have tried this one to be very effective, very safe in growing the one week old fry of Japanese koi, this goldfish, and even this uh, baby catfish. So we already have placed the wheat germ and the pellet inside 
and we will now start grinding this one. So in 3 minutes, we were able to successfully powderize this pellet and the wheat germ and we will transfer them here. And this is already good for uh, the consumption of the fish for one week. And uh, this is very cheap compared to buying this uh, high protein fish powder for the fry in the market. And you can try this one. I said that our experience is the best teacher. So my experience is this. Very simple yet very effective. Very economical and 100% sure that we can grow our fish so fast. So now we have this uh, powderized wheat germ together with the fish food. And then we will now feed this one to the fry of our Japanese koi. Come on, let's go! So I'm feeding here our baby Japanese koi. We estimated this to reach around 10,000 heads of this fry, this tank alone. And we already have segregated some 2,500 over there and another 5,000 right there. So all in all, we can assume that the total number of fry that we can produce out of one breeding is 13 to 15,000. Well, that's an estimate. But the good thing that I can share with you is on the business side. Imagine if you can raise some 10, 15,000 fry of this uh, koi and you will sell that in a matter of, you know, two months. You will sell that at the wholesale price of five pesos per per koi per piece you will earn 50,000 in just a matter of two months we're just simply breeding this uh, Japanese koi without spending a lot of money for the consumption the food your capital is just your effort so now I'm feeding them and some of them are already big we already have segregated the ones that have grown fast because they will eat the smaller ones they're here and they have good colors I'm happy with this crossing, this Kohako to this uh, tricolor koi, Utsuri. You will multiply maybe the 10,000 fry to 5 pesos. That's a big income. That's a good income already. And you will not need a big capital for this. Your capital will be your, your effort, your labor. You know, waking up in the morning and breathing fish and of course the water is also one of the cost of the production but it's very minimal compared to the gain that you can earn actually it was featured in our national television here in the philippines the program of miss jessica soho their attention were caught when i kept posting on youtube and facebook about breeding this japanese koi and this ornamental fish and i was featured in one of the episodes and i'm so happy about that and it encourages so many young people here in our country, the Philippines, to try to also engage in this uh, kind of venture, this uh, business venture of breeding tropical fish. So they're eating now and I can safely give them this food because if you have some fiber in the diet of this baby koi, you will be assured that there will be no stomach trouble in the future. So they're eating now, we can feed plenty and then I'm giving them uh, this kind of food three times a day. So this is all that we can share with you so far. Actually, I have one another tip that we can discuss about. 
the setup of this uh, submersible pump you will see right there that the water is really splashing and you can maximize the use of your submersible pump if uh, you're gonna adapt that system it will be placed at the top of the water so that the water will flush over in the tank and this can optimize the oxygen production and of course the other uh, outlet will be directed towards the net which is used as the filter media so that this water can be cycled and can produce good bacteria so this is a temporary uh, facility because we are set to put them in the mud pan or in a bigger box where we can monitor their their growth and we can feed them every morning and ensure that they can be raised in accordance to our plan for them so we have actually scheduled the plants we have bred we have you know raised them and then we will select good breeders and then we will sell this to the public and then breed again this is the cycle so i hope that you are inspired with this video and if you are not subscribed to this channel I will humbly ask you to please subscribe and hit that notification bell because we are uploading videos regularly and shout out to those ones who decided to become members of this channel thanks a lot for those who have just subscribed new subscribers welcome to this big family of hobbyists and also those ones who made comments please if you have some input to share I mean your knowledge your techniques that's really very welcome only here at Dexter's World!